Welcome to Waking Up With AI, a podcast from Paul Weiss, featuring your hosts, Catherine Forrest and Anna Gressel. The only update you need on AI policy, law, and governance starts now. All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Waking Up With AI, a Paul Weiss podcast. I'm Catherine Forrest. And I'm Anna Gressel. And Anna, it's August. And so while we're here recording this, we're not in foreign countries, but we are in vacation kind of spots, but yet working. That's true. Catherine, do you want to tell folks where you are today? Well, I'm in Maine. All right. I think I've been in Maine for other episodes before. (laughs) Even if I haven't mentioned it, I have, in fact, been in Maine. That's true. That's true. And I'm out in Long Island. And it's like a perfectly blue sky today. So I'm just really, really a lovely time to record a podcast and nerd out on some of our favorite AI topics. Yeah. And today's going to be a particularly nerdy one. You got to love technology that not only allows us to work remotely, but to record podcasts remotely too, and then talk about some extraordinary technological developments. Yep. I'm a fan. My dog's a fan. We're all fans of our traveling podcast. All right. So let's jump right in. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk today about some important developments in AI models. That's right. And we'll start with a basic point underneath it all, which is that every generative AI model relies on a choice of architecture. And today, the generative AI models that have been commercialized, like OpenAI's GPT models or Meta's Llama or Google's Gemini, etc., most of those are built on an architecture called the transformer architecture. And we mentioned that transformer concept in one of our early episodes. Right, definitely. And, you know, some of our listeners will have heard of it. That architecture dates back to a 2017 paper that's now quite famous that came out of Google called Attention is All You Need. For our purposes, I think we can describe transformer architectures as neural networks where data is broken down into chunks or tokens, ingested, and then taken into the model. And the architecture is based on complex ways of the model analyzing by paying attention to tokens and their relationship to one another and to various concepts. Yeah, for instance, if the model, a transformer model, and just a story about a cat, it would do that by taking the words cat and whatever the context was around the story, it'd make them into tokens, and then it would pay attention to how that word cat relates to the context. It might relate it to other cats within the neural network. It might relate it to dogs. And you've got these relationships between the different tokens that become really weighted parameters or relationships between the words. So let's contrast that to another big architectural paradigm that listeners may be familiar with. And those are diffusion models. If you remember back to the early days of image generation, A lot of those image generation models like MidJourney and Stable Diffusion were actually diffusion models and they're used often to generate graphics or images. But we're not going to talk about those in detail today. Right. Those were some text to image models where you enter a prompt. And I did this once. Uh, I entered a lady drinking tea in the park with a lion. And then the model actually will have as output a photorealistic image for me in my prompt of a lady drinking tea in the park with a lion. And I did it several different times and came out with several different versions of that image. Right. And so let's focus today again on these transformer models, which have been really immensely successful in terms of most of the generative AI models that companies are working with today. However, despite their success, there have been challenges that people are talking about and working through And one of those is compute. And that's because a crucial ingredient in transformer success, the attention mechanism that we talked about a few minutes ago, imposes relatively high compute costs. That's the cost it takes to train the model or run the model. And that can translate into a very high financial cost. Yeah. And there's been a lot of work done to try and reduce those compute costs. Really, the financial aspects are, they can be very significant. And so you've got researchers who are experimenting with different architectures. And I should also say, it's not just about compute costs. There are a variety of additional complex reasons why other architectures for AI and generative AI have been the subject of a lot of experimentation. So one of the really fun things about working with Catherine 
is that we actually do spend our non-podcast coffee time talking about things like different architectures that are coming into play right now and that people are thinking about. And one of the architectures that, Catherine, you and I have been talking about for quite some time is called Mamba. And that's a non-transformer language model. It's actually called a selective state space sequence model, which is quite a mouthful. Right. It really is a mouthful. And if you say it four times really quickly, then you get actually a gold star. So let me give the audience a quick sense, a very quick sense of how Mamba works. There's a selection mechanism within the model that enables it to selectively focus on the most important information that is input into the model. So you can think of it as a model that doesn't have to look at every word, for instance, in a paragraph or in a sequence in order to understand the overall context, the information, the semantic structure. The model is able to make judgments about and then discard what is deemed to be irrelevant data. And that allows it to actually get a lot of bang for the buck over what it's ingesting and focusing on and not having to do it for every single word. And the transformer architecture really did look at every single token. That's exactly right, Catherine. And a model based on the Mamba architecture was just released by Abu Dhabi's Technology Innovation Institute, or TII, called the Falcon Mamba 7B. And it's really one of the first major releases, particularly on an open source basis, of a Mamba-based model. And it's an iteration of their Falcon series of models. Now, Mamba goes back to a December 2023 paper from Albert Gu and Tri Dao, respectively out of Carnegie Mellon and Princeton University. And that paper is called Mamba, Linear Time Sequence Modeling with Selective State Spaces. Again, kind of a mouthful. And the word Mamba literally refers to the venomous snake in Africa and was apparently chosen because of all of those S words and selective state space sequence model. See, I can't even say it, but you can just imagine it like a S and then think of a Mamba. <laughs> Right. Well, thankfully, we're not going to go too far into the weeds on how these selective state space models work and how they're different from transformers, though that's a really interesting topic. The headline really for our audience is that these models, this different kind of architecture is making significant headway in 2024 and that there are now computational efficiencies and some companies may be tempted to start really working with them and adopting them. I don't think we're saying that companies are going to stop using models based on transformer architecture. They're robust and they're very advanced and they're some of the most powerful models today. But other model architectures are making headway and companies are exploring with them. And that's a really interesting, exciting moment to be in. And part of the story here is that generative AI at the most fundamental level is not a monolith. We've been talking a lot in some of our prior episodes or here and there at least about the black box problem of interpretability. But when it comes to architectures, you are able to understand or know the type of architecture and therefore some of the basic ways in which a particular model with a particular architecture is supposed to work. And particular architectures may also have strengths and be good at certain tasks. So Mamba's original authors talked about things like audio and genomics tasks as potential strengths of that architecture. Okay, so the legal takeaway of all of this is not only the fact that generative AI is just not one type of monolith, but that there are actually several types of architectures that are going to be utilized in the near future, but that regulators are going to be interested in this as well. And they're going to be looking at some of the differences in the way those architectures impact the decision making of a particular model and whether or not different kinds of models are able to interact with one another. And it's not just regulators that may be paying attention to architectural choices. For our listeners that are licensing in or considering licensing in generative AI applications, you too may want to know more about what architectural choices the developer has made and why they made those choices, because that might actually have implications for the benefits of the technology and whether it's fit for purpose for the application you're envisioning. Right. And we're going to come back to these models. I think there's going to be a lot of developments with the Mamba model, as well as other alternatives to transformer architecture. But that's all we've got time for today. I'm Catherine Forrest. And I'm Anna Gressel. Make sure you like and share the podcast if you've been enjoying it. 
Thanks for listening to Waking Up With AI. Be sure to subscribe in your favorite podcast app to stay up to date on the latest in AI policy, law, and governance. For more information on Paul Weiss, go to our website at www.paulweiss.com. This podcast is not intended to provide legal advice, and no legal or business decision should be based on its content. Past results are no guarantee of future outcomes.